Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to find the common ratio of a geometric sequence. So first off, let's just uh, talk about what a geometric sequence is. And so this is an example of what a geometric sequence is. Um, and you might be able to see a pattern to this. Um, this is different than an arithmetic sequence. Uh, where it goes like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, where it goes up by 2 each time, or up by 8, or down by 3 each time. This one, you might notice, has a pattern as well. But this one, we are multiplying by 2 each time to get the, uh, to get the next number. And so this number is called the common ratio. And why do we call it the common ratio? Well, because what we're actually doing is we're taking a number and we're dividing it by the number that precedes it, the number right before it. So 4 divided by 2, right? And if I did that to the next one, 8 divided by 4, and 16 divided by 8, and 32 divided by 16, I would get fractions that are all equal ratios. And so these all have the same uh, answer. And this ratio happens to be 2, and that's the common ratio. So when you find the common ratio, that's the number that's multiplied to get the next number. So here's an example of another one. And you might be able to spot what the uh, pattern is here. Um, and so these are some easy ones, and you can see that this is multiplying by 3, right, each time. But we really want to focus on, on finding that ratio and doing it the proper way because they're not always going to be super easy and uh, able to be found out real quick. So to find that common ratio, we take our a number and we divide it by the one before it. So 3 divided by 1, 9 over 3. 27 over 9, and 81 over 27, and those all come out to 3. They have that common ratio, and that's the number, again, that you multiply to get to the next number. So let's show you how to quickly find the common ratio. So here's an example of one, um, and if you're asked to find the common ratio, it usually means that this is a geometric sequence. So we're going to assume that. And so even if you're able to spot what, what it is, um, you always want to get into the habit of just doing that division um, each time. Okay. And so I'm going to pick just two random numbers, 16 and 4. Now, I should have probably picked 4 and 1 because they're the easier ones. But I just want you to know that it doesn't matter which one pair you pick. Um, when you take the number and divide it by the one before it, you're going to get that common ratio, okay? And you really only need to do one in order to, to find it. Um, if you had to prove that it was a geometric sequence, then you would have to do all of them to see if they all equaled four. Um, but just to find it a common ratio quickly, all you do is take pick any number, divide it by the one before it, and you always want to maybe pick the easiest ones. So I'm going to give you um, a bunch of di different scenarios, different geometric sequences, so that you uh, um, have seen all of these. And so here we go. To find the common ratio of this one, we're going to take our two easiest numbers, negative 10 and negative 2, and we're going to divide them, and that comes out to 5. And if you notice that each number, if you multiply by positive 5, you'll get the next number. Now this one right here, this one is going down. And so um, some of you might notice right off the bat that, uh, oh, I see it's dividing by 3. But divide by 3 is not the common ratio. You want to put it in terms of what is multiplied to get the next number. So what we do is we pick any two numbers. I'll do 10 and 30. And I take 10 and divide it by 30, which simplifies to 1 -third. And so this is the true common ratio. Uh, if I took 270 and multiplied it by one third, I get 90. And so multiplying by one third is the same as dividing by three, but
but you always want to put the common ratio in terms of what you're multiplying to get that next number. All right, now look at this one. This one uh, is going back and forth from negative to positive, negative, positive, negative. And anytime you see this, you can be sure that the common ratio is going to be negative. So let's try it out. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. And if you did it to negative 12 divided by 6, you would get negative 2. 24 divided by negative 12, that's negative 2 as well. And so anytime you see them going back and forth from negative to positive, your common ratio is going to be a negative number. All right, well, we couldn't have it without fractions. They're always fun. And so hopefully you uh, remember how to um, divide fractions because that's what you're going to have to do here. So we will pick our two numbers. We'll take two ninths and divide it by one third. And if you forgot how to divide fractions, you simply multiply the um, reciprocal of the second number. In other words, you flip the second guy and multiply. And so we did that. We flipped one third to three over one. We multiply straight across. We get six over nine, and that simplifies to two thirds. You'll always want to put it in to the simplified form. And so it doesn't matter which fractions fraction pair you picked. If you divided the one before it, you would get two thirds. And lastly, let's do a decimal one. So this is a geometric sequence, and so. Um, I'm going to take my two smallest numbers and divide them. So negative, I'm sorry, 0.26 divided by 0.2 um, equals 1.3. And if you did that to any of them, you would find it's 1.3. And this one you can use a calculator. Um, doing long division with decimals sometimes is a long process. So there you have it. You just learned how to find the common ratio quickly in a geometric sequence. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.